Hi there, Mark here again, and welcome to part two of my build guide for the Tamiya Subaru Brat on the ORV chassis. We got to step 10 last time, so we got this far, the front suspension's done, we've got the gearbox done, so step 11 is, well it says it's the drive shaft assembly, but basically all we're going to do is cut down this rubber boot into two halves that resemble this piece here, and then slide in the dog bones. Now I've never had any luck snipping straight across with a straight pair of scissors so I'm just going to trim around with these uh, polycarbonate scissors, get it as close as I can. I think that's good enough, I'll just do the other one. So all we have to do now is force this dog bone through, it is quite tight I will say, just be careful not to uh, puncture the rubber with the uh, sharp edges of that dog bone. Okay so that's in, do two and uh, get some AW grease on the ends. Step 12 is the rear arm assembly so first off we want to make one of these like I already have so we want to put uh, the drive shaft um, together with the uh, output cups and the axle and as usual with all the kits I get with these rubber boots the fit is like really sloppy and there's not going to stop any dirt getting in there so what I've got again is some o-rings and I'm going to put some o-rings uh, around the outside of that just to give it a firm hold on there and stop the dirt getting in. So I don't know if you can see there I've got the o-ring kind of just squashed around the outside just kind of force the end in. Okay now that's a nice tight fit. Your wheel axle, get some grease in there and get your little o-ring that's just got to go push down in there with the ring on and just slide this one in. Okay so that's the second one done obviously there's one with the, the longer joints and the short joint there. Following the diagram it shows the one with the long joints going into part C6 the rear suspension arm which is the left side. I've got some optional bearings that I'm putting in mine. One in each side they are plastic bushes with the supplied with the kit. Uh, simply pop that through and secure it with a split pin so it doesn't fall out and the same for the other side. In step 13 we're going to attach those arms so I'll just show you the one side they're both the same. So this is the right hand arm and uh, you need to engage that output cup into the gearbox and then you need some grease on this end here and that end there that's where it's going to pivot so you insert that one end there into that bigger hole in the gearbox. Just give it a turn and make sure you've got the dog bones engaged into the cups there before you put this plate on, which is an MD12. That simply goes over there, like so, and secure that with two of the darker 10mm screws. Like so, and do the same to the other side. It'll look like that when you're finished, just make sure everything's moving nice and smoothly and it's on to the next step which I think is making the shocks. Right so I'm going to build the shocks going through steps 14, 15 and a little bit of 16 in one go to show you how I do them anyway. So first thing you want to do is get your shaft and uh, fit on the one circlip. Then your MS1 white piston valve goes on the top and then you've got to get that pesky little C-clip or E-clip just get it fitted into the top groove there get your shock body on, I like to put a bit of grease in to seal up the o-rings your first red o-ring in a bit more grease the second o-ring and then part of V10 just goes in the end it's got a tiny lip on it and you want the lip pointing downwards and screw on your end cap. Don't do it all the way up till you've got your piston in. Okay so this is where I do it a little differently. I've just got my finger over the bottom hole and I'm going to fill up the shock with oil now. Well, nearly to the top anyway. And then I'm going to pop the shaft or the rod down through the bottom hole. Carefully pull the piston down. Just got to clean up bit of mess. 
Okay, just move the piston up and down a little bit and uh, let any bubbles come to the surface. Top it right up. Your MS3 rubber diaphragm or rubber cap. Then you want part V9, which is your top mount for the shock. And then your MS4 aluminium cap. Just goes over that and screw it all together. Now you can tighten up the top against the bottom as tight as you can. Then you want V5, which is your bottom mount. And just screw that on. And I've got these small pliers that uh, have no serrations, so I'm not going to damage the, uh, the shaft. Just check that's nice and smooth. E spring, pop that over, and then it's plastic part C18, which uh, holds the bottom of the spring. So that's the shock done, and obviously, make two. In step 16, we're going to fit those shocks now. It's very simple. You just need to get your shock. You need two of these step screws, which are BA1s, and one goes obviously in the bottom into the suspension arm and the second one locates in the hole on the chassis like so and simply repeat for the other side that feels nice and smooth step 17 we're going to attach the pinion gear uh, get the right one for the, the selected spur gear you've got and pop in the tiny little grub screw that's in there Pop on your motor plate to make sure the holes are lined up and get your grub screw lined up on the flat of the uh, shaft and then we want this, let's get it a tight fit, we want that 16.5 millimetres from the motor plate to the top of the pinion as close as you can get it and then give it a good nip up. In step 18 we're fitting the motor um, with this big pinion on it just about gets through into that hole I've got to say it's very tight just need part C12 and the two 30mm long screws put them into the holes twiddle the motor till the holes uh, line up with the screws and just nip those up and you just need to put plastic part A1 on for the hold of the end of the battery with uh, the 4 by 12 screws. At the beginning of step 19 we're also going to fit on that battery holder onto the other side. With the 3 by 12 screws and then we've got this part here A7 which is for the switch. And that's held on with these 3 by 10 screws that have got like a, a built in washer onto these two holes. You can simply screw those part of the way in and then just get the part and it'll slot over the screws like that and then just get them nipped up. Now for the electronics, as you can see I've got the servo and I've stuck on my ESC onto the side as it shows here and we've got to try and get that located in here now. So I'm just going to feed all the wires through. So now they're in place, get your 3x10 with a captive washer on, your BA4 and I'm just going to get that screw I hold the uh, the front of the servo like so and as you can see I push this bar back it's uh, a bit loose just push it back down just help me get the uh, cable screw moving out the way and get the other screw in that hole there so it shows here in the manual it's showing putting your receiver right down inside here in, in this gap uh, attaching with some tape onto that kind of uh, T-piece at the bottom that black piece but there's really not a lot for it to uh, adhere to and with the receiver being right down there it's going to get all the dirt mud any water if there's any around flicked up onto it so that's not good at all don't like that um, so i'm going to stick mine up here as you can see i've got velcro because i swap my receivers between cars velcro on this and it's just going to sit on the top there so i'll just get all the wiring tidied up and the instructions also show fitting the on off switch um, from underneath into this bracket but again I don't like the idea of that with this hanging down I think it's going to be better to be fitted the other way on so the switch is actually pointing down and with the body on you can just get to that nice and easily so first thing you have to do is take the screws out the switch and the top plate you need this rubber bar MT1 
fit that on. Obviously I'm doing this opposite to where you would. Then the cover, MT2. Then plastic part A4. Then you've got your 2 by 15 screw and two more washer and the to thread that through all of those pieces and screw it into the switch. The second screw and washer and uh, that's this step finished. So on to step 20 and all you need is these two rods and the 4mm ball ends and all we need to do is screw two of those or well, one each onto each of these bars and they do screw on quite easily thank goodness and then just match them up to the diagram to make sure the lengths are correct and with both of them make sure with that bend pointing upwards that the ball end is pointing downwards. Straight on to step 21 and you're just going to need these S parts here and the parts you're going to need is S4 or S7 whichever fits your servo. Then you want your spring which is S6 just clips on like so. Then part S3 And then finally S1 sits in the top, like that. Then you just need to insert the rods, like so. And we're going to get this onto the servo. Just give it a good push on, and by the way I have centred up the servo with uh, the electronics turned on, make sure you do that first, and then get whatever screw fits your servo. Then it's simply a case of popping the ball ends on to your steering uprights. And to finish this step, it's just this bar MR7. That fits across there, secured by a 10mm machine screw from either side. And with all that done, that's the end of step 21. Steps 22 and 23 are building up the front and the rear wheels. Shows the front wheels on 22 and the rears on 23. And it does show there's a bit of a trick of how to get these uh, wheels fitted because they are very tight inside the tyres, I will say. So let's uh, have a go. So obviously get two of these wheel part trees and you will see on them is printed an F and an R. So obviously these are for the front wheels and these are for the back. So let's get the fronts done first. And the difference between the fronts and the rears is only the centre because obviously we need to put bearings so there's bearing holders in the front one. Anyway, the tyres are all the same, don't think it matters which way round you put them on and it, as it shows you need to force the wheel centre like so into the tyre. and then just kind of turn it round. And it's as simple as that. If you try any other way, I promise you, you will struggle. But that's, uh, that's it, so that's seated in the middle. And then it's just a case of finding the little cutout in the wheel rim there. And there's a notch in the actual center of the wheel. Those need to line up and it did click into place so that's the one side and then get your other side and the same again you've got to line up those notches. You can get your four tiny little two mil nuts and they go in those captive areas in the wheel and insert your little 2 by 8 screw. It does get easier once you've put the first one in because obviously it kind of um, pulls the two half of the wheels together and squashes um, the bead of the tyre into the rim. It's kind of a bead lock design so they won't come off the rims. It's very clever. So that's the front done. It's exactly the same process for the rear. And there you go, 
make two sets. Steps 24 and 25 are simply attaching the wheels and for the front it's just a case of your bushings or bearings one goes on each side simply a case of over the axle and on with a wheel nut and then for the back take out your R clip put your pin through the hole then part C11 Make sure it engages on the pin, and then it's simply the wheel and the nut. Okay, so the last thing I want to do, which is going to finish off my build, is just fit this underplate on here, and it just goes on with the three 3 by 10 self-tapping screws. So now that's two 3 by 10s and one 3 by 12 just the uh, rear body post to mount now uh, and the aerial but obviously I'll, I'll leave those till I've done the body uh, or bodies because there's two of them to do so there she is I must say I really did enjoy that build it's a great little kit to put together went together really quite easily and uh, quite quickly really I suppose um, so yeah that's it for now thanks for following along and I hope that you join me on the bodywork. cheers bye